Outlander. Okay. I'm going to briefly explain the differences between the different rigid body physics settings. All right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and just add a, a mesh and a plane, and this will be the floor. I'm going to scale it up, scale, 25, enter, and it's important to do this, control A to apply the scale. Anytime you, you change the size of an object that's going to be a rigid body object, it's important to apply the scale. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, rotate this a little bit on the x-axis. Rotate x. That way it can represent the ground and the objects can roll across the ground. All right, with that selected, I'm going to go ahead and uh, click rigid body and then set this to passive. Because if I keep it set to active, then if I press play, it just falls away it falls with gravity so if I put this on passive and click play it stays passive it doesn't fall alright now I want to add another object add mesh and then a cube now obviously if I press play now nothing happens because the cube has no rigid body uh, it doesn't have rigid body applied to it so with the cube select it press rigid body and then just leave everything set the same or set at its default setting press play it falls hits the ground and bounces a little bit then comes to a stop now if I put this on sphere it's gonna treat this cube like a sphere now it's still gonna look like a cube but it's gonna the physics is going to treat it like it's like it's a sphere so it should roll about like you would imagine a sphere would roll. The same thing if I put this on cylinder. So if we look at it, we can see the cylinder, it's round like this, and then it's vertical going this way. So if I drop it, it's like dropping a cylinder on its end. But if I rotate on the y-axis, rotate y90, then it should row this direction. Basically like as if it was a cylinder. Alright, now you have um, box. Box is probably the best one, especially for very basic shapes like Keva Plank type simulations. Because if you're familiar with my videos, I do a lot of Keva Plank type simulations. And Box, it essentially is treating everything as if it has six sides. Like in this case, a cube has six sides, so it's going to fall exactly like a cube should. But even if, um, you know, I was to press tab, go into edit mode, and then check this face, and then inset, and then extrude, or not really extrude, but just drag this out, you can see that, see this little orange box? That's the physics box. That's what, where this box comes from, or this comes from this box setting. Now if I press tab, it's not going to treat this as the shape. It's going to treat it as, you know, just this green box. Because it kind of averages it out. You see what I mean? Goes up halfway this way and then goes up the same way past here. If that makes any sense, I'm probably not explaining it very well, but you can sort of see what I'm talking about. Now, if I if I change this to mesh, let's say convex hole first off. Convex hole is what it defaults to because convex hole works for the largest number of shapes the largest number of uh, basic geometry I guess you could say because convex hole is like a piece of shrink wrapped wrapped around the object 
And in this case, because there is no convex, or pardon me, because there is no concave shape uh, bends to this object, the shrink wrap can wrap around it perfectly, and it's going to pretty much react exactly how it should. Like if I, let me go ahead and ro rotate this on the x-axis to about there and see it kind of tipped up on the kind of tipped up on the nose of it a little bit just like it actually should be in that shape but if I was to you know let me do it this way go ahead and get rid of this and then add another mesh or add a cube now this one I'm just going to raise up and I'm going to uh, size on that uh, scale it on the X and Y axis S shift Z and drag it to about there and then press control A to, to apply the scale press tab to go into edit mode select the top face press delete and then delete the top face exit edit mode and now if I add another mesh and I'm just going to grab a sphere bring it up above it I will select this uh, cube or this box and then click it on rigid bodies leave everything like it's normally set to, to to the default settings and then take the sphere and do the same thing now if I press play the box should fall and then the sphere should fall but you see it the sphere did not fall into the box it just hit like an imaginary barrier and that's because this box is set to convex hole and remember I said that's like shrink wrapped shrink wrap that's wrapped around the box and the shrink wrap just goes from this side to this side creating a shell around it now because this right here the inside is like a concave shape and convex hole only works for convex shapes if that makes any sense I hope it does because I'm probably not explaining it very well now if I want this sphere to fall into the box how do I go about doing that change it from convex to mesh and what mesh does it literally tells the physics engine to treat the exact shape as its reference so it's going to treat the inside of the box just like it would the outside of the box so it's basically a box and if I press play the ball falls into it rows to the edge hits the edge and just like you would imagine it should now if I was to change the box from active to passive then obviously the box stays in place and the sphere falls into it now there is uh, a cone setting and it basically just does the same thing as I've, I've been talking about except it creates the um, it tells the physics engine to treat whatever object is set with a cone aspect to treat it like it's shaped like a cone which I can't imagine what that would be used for but it's there and capsule as far as I can tell it's treating it essentially like an like a low poly sphere that's essentially what it's doing in my opinion because if I was to press play right now what I would imagine it's going to do the sphere is going to fall it's going to hit this edge and then it's going to roll off pretty much like I figured it was going to do which that's pretty useless for you know a box you know so I want to set this back to mesh press play now it's falling back into the box again now you have a couple other settings you have friction settings 
and it's exactly what it sounds like. That's how much friction between different objects. For for example, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of, well no, actually I'm going to leave this sphere here for now. I'm going to make this zero friction, change it to passive, not passive, to active. That way the box down here will fall but because there's zero friction it should slide. We'll see what that does. Yeah see pretty much like I thought. And let's just add a little bit of friction. 0.1. So you pretty much get an idea exactly what that does. And then over here you have uh, margin. I have never had to mess with this. I have always left this like it is. Um, but essentially it creates a small buffer between the objects where they're colliding with each other. Now if I was to put this on one, that's an insanely large number in terms of margin. And then press play. See what I mean? Now it's floating above the floor, which you really don't want that because it would look awfully weird. If I was to, you know, set up a light so we can actually see what we're actually looking at a whole lot easier. Yeah, go ahead and turn off that so it's not all pink. And put this on rendered. You know, see how you got that big gap. You can see it a lot better when it's in rendered mode in my opinion. Now you definitely wouldn't want that and if we look in here we got the same gap between the ball and the floor and the ball and the wall. So we definitely would not want any kind of weird um, margin on this box. Now if I go ahead and go back to the beginning go back to solid and then change this back to what it was set to originally which is 0.04 and then press play it works more realistically alright and then now there's just one other main one that we need to go over and this is in my opinion this is another one that's ver that's very important when you're dealing with like making uh, Keva plank type buildings. You want the individual planks to be to want to enable deactivation and start deactivate it. And what that means is, even though it's set to active, it will be treated as passive until an active object hits it. So, whenever I pre press play, this. When the box will stay in place, but the sphere will fall, and the moment the sphere hits the box, then this box will fall. And the reason why you do that when it comes to like Keva Plank type buildings is because it makes it a whole lot more stable. But anyway, I hope you found this uh, uh, beneficial. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Later, people.